James Carvel and Mary Madeline have never been by themselves because they have each other. Aww. And they've written a book. Uh, it's called Love and War, 20 Years, Three Presidents, Two Daughters, and One Louisiana Home. Uh, James Carvel and Mary Madeline join us now. Good morning to you. You buy, can... you on the, buy, buy you on the Beltway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're in the you're in Washington D.C. today. Well, we wasted that. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> wasted all that Cajun music on you. So listen, you know, I, I would imagine that it's been, it's a very interesting household from time to time. And you talk about this in this book that from time to time, even though you truly love one another, there have been times where you just couldn't talk to each other. Which is a euphemism for. Being perilously close to having to have all sharp objects removed <laughs> in the vicinity. Not often, but, yeah, people get passionate about certain political subjects. But what, what marriage doesn't? If it wasn't this, if it wasn't the Iraq War, it would be something else. I'm sure it would be a dripping faucet. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, J James, I, you and I disagree on so many things politically, but I've always admired you because of your loyalty. You are fiercely loyal. Mary, you as well. You were so loyal to the, the Bushes as well. Uh, and and i got to ask you, because the Beltway is buzzing today about this new book by uh, Robert Gates, and some of the stuff that is in this book really hammering the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton, and Joe Biden. Uh, what is your take on this, James Carville? Do you, what do you think of Bob well, Gates I, and what he said? I, I had read it out. Talked to, to Mike Barnacle this morning. Well, he, he hammers in, uh, and then he says, "Well, I agree with everything he did on Afghanistan." Uh, you know, I, I, I guess I go back to Bismarck. People shouldn't watch blood and sausage be made or, or war policy. Um, I'm not at all surprised that uh, there was a lot of angst about the policy. I don't think that the, President Obama ever thought much of these wars is that we got into them but put a lot of thought and uh, did pretty clear that he's anxious to get out of both of them but but you know secretary gates didn't step down from his position he stayed on he didn't inform the american people before the 2012 election he waited until one year into the president's second term and then he has a book out there with, with all of these you know th these tales to tell what does that say about the loyalty here well look I, if you ask me if i would have done it no but i think bob i gotta tell you i think bob gates is a Patriot, he probably did what he thought was in his best interest. But uh, we wrote a book, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do something like that. But I, I can't judge what another person does. I'll just have to let that slide. Can I add something yep. to this in a more, in a larger sense? Having been in the White House on 9/11, everybody who had anything to do with this paradigm shift in our strategic security imperative has written a book about it and there are many thoughts because it's a new as i said it's a paradigmatic shift so i think gates we had many disagreements in our administration I mean, this is very tough it's a new enemy it's a very strategic difference between stability um of the of the cold war genre and what we're trying to have to this threat we're having to face now so i don't think it was disloyalty you know, we tend to, inside the Beltway, use a template of loyalty to a person when I think there is a really important need for all voices who are patriots to the country and care about security hmm. to weigh in with what they think their best opinion is about that subject. I, I want to ask you, in, in the Carville Madeline home, when the controversial topic of Obamacare comes up, I imagine there's a pretty good conversation. Could you kind of put out your positions on how you feel about Obamacare? We disagree. Yeah, but in, in, in what way? And what, and what do you disagree? Well, I'll, I'll quickly start. Wait, I've been it, work, when I worked for Poppy Bush, Bush One. We're working on affordability and portability. Health care has been, and health care delivery, health care insurance has long been an evolving and a reformable and has been reformed in this country, working on it for a, a long time. This this approach to, to it is way over the top unnecessary. It's not going to insure the uninsured. There is no point in try, uh, overhauling the entire system to take care of the possibly 15% that were uninsured, and 91% of the people were happy with what they were doing. So I, I think it was the wrong policy. The right sentiment is to continue the evolution of delivering, to continue to deliver the best health care in, in the world. This is not it. Reforms will continue to be made along the lines of the 
what had the Ryan plan, which is an extension of the Clinton plan, which is an extension of the Bush one plan. This is none of those. Yeah, yeah I think, I think it, first of all, I think it's working already. Uh, read Jason Furman in yesterday's Wall Street Journal. We've had the best four years in, in modern American history in terms of a flat in the health care cost. Uh, the thing is now taking two steps forward, one back. We're never going back to the old system where we had all these people that were uninsured. Health care costs were rising exponentially higher than the rate of inflation. And, uh, look, is the thing going to have some, some fits and starts? Sure. Are they going to have to fix some things? Absolutely. But, you know, it's up and running. It's working. It's popular in Massachusetts. And it's starting. It's it's up and running in the country, and the country's not going back. It's it's a colossal waste of breath to try to, to tell the country we're going to go back to the old system because we're not. You recognize the two voices as James Carville and, of course, his wife Mary Madeline, and their new book, "Love and War: Twenty Years, Three Presidents, Two Daughters, and One Louisiana Home," is out now. And I got to ask you: you reveal in this book that your marriage, just like so many other family relationships during the contested election of 2011. Uh, or excuse me, of 2000, between uh, the recount between Al Gore and uh, George W. Bush, uh, you felt some real strains there. In fact, you weren't even speaking to each other during that recount process. Uh, James, are, are you like Al Gore? Are you still bothered by this, or have you gotten over it now? Just half and half. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> well, you still don't talk about it? Seriously? Uh, not too much. But it's, you know what? It's been a long time ago. We got uh, we had some intervening events in the last. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bigger fish to fry. Yeah. Well, speaking of intervening events, how, how is it on your kids um, growing up in your home? Because you you do obviously have such. I mean, they've got to hear you going yeah. at it. On, I'm on. wondering how many of them became Republicans and how many of them <laughs> right, became exactly. Republicans. You split fifty fifty. Let's just say they're highly opinionated and uh, <laughs> they speak their minds. I don't know where they got that from. And yeah. Where they're going to come down on an issue has nothing to do with, with what either of their parents think. Well, I think I right. speak for America. and I, I, a lot of connection between what we think and say and what they do. I think I speak for America, and I would guess I also speak for James when I hope that both of your daughters got Mary's looks. Great. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Listen, thank guys, you guys thank you so much. Good luck with the book. Good luck, you guys, and thanks for having me. All right, no, it was a pleasure to have you both on.